break out the Werther's Originals, cancel your 4 p.m. dinner reservations, and turn up the furnace just a little bit, because we just watched Rabid Grannies on... B! Movie! Mania! Sunny! Eggs? Welcome to the crossroads of camp, the bastion of the bazaar, the place where low budgets meet high praise. Yes, it's B-Movie Mania. And now, B-Movie Maniacs, here are your hosts, the cream of the crap, the connoisseurs of cult, your cinematic creepy uncles, Paul Brooks, Mike Hayes, Jason Hulls, and Crazy Chris Hudson. Can I get a little help crossing the streets from one of you young boys? <laughs> <coughs> yeah. Welcome, everybody, to Season 2, Episode 2 of B-Movie Mania. I'm your host this time around, Jason Hulls, and with me, as always, are the other B-Movie Maniacs. We have Mike Hayes. Hello! We have Paul Brooks. Uh, it's way past my bedtime. <laughs> and we have crazy Chris Hudson. Eh? I can't quite hear I, you. I say, Speak up, Sonny. <laughs> I say that's crazy Chris Hudson. Crazy Chris Hudson. Are you Are you there? What? Can you hear me? Crazy Chris Measy? <laughs> Turn up your herring aid, Sonny. <laughs> I need to go to Bob Evans. I think we've just we've just ended our sponsorship from the AACP. <laughs> Who? You mean the AARP? AARP. Yeah, whatever. I'm, did you I'm mean the NAACP? Did you? Did you forget which one? Also, I don't think there's any Bob Evans in Belgium. I was wondering about that. If I made a Bob Evans joke, if that was how regional that was, certainly not Belgium. Anyway, hello everyone. We watched. Uh, the trauma film Rabbit Grannies. Quick takes! Paul, this is a French film. French Belgium, I think it said. H how do you feel about that? You know, I gotta be honest, this movie made me feel alive. No, it no, made no. me feel invigorated. Paul, you can't possibly be talking about Rabbit Grannies. Uh, I think we're... we're let, let's just move on. <laughs> Mike, what was yours? Uh, my quick take was, ah, uh, jeez, I don't think anything's quick with this movie. Even death. <laughs> nice. Chris? Eh? What's that, Sonny? Mcnakes? What are Mcnakes? My quick take, I think, is, uh... <laughs> <laughs> Just the slow Just... sound of life leaving my body. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Jay just, just died. like old age. Mm -hmm. um, boy, oh, boy. So, what an exciting movie this was. Uh, Paul, would you say that, however, okay, trying try to be positive because that's what we do here. I think there's going to be a lot of negative for this one, um, which is a complete <laughs> surprise to me, honestly. I thought this was going to be crazy. Um, but trying to stay positive, would you would you compare it to the Dogma 95 film, The Celebration? What the what? Uh, Jay, I would. If you want to talk about Dogma uh, eighty five. Well, okay. So no, look, 80, it's it's yeah. a movie about awful. Well, it's about family coming back. In this case of Rabbit Granny's awful family coming back, and there being a lot of drama. I mean, that's kind There's of the same as the celebration, right, Mike? Well, Except for it, this yeah, one every, has demonic old women. Yes. Well, everything also just like the Dogma films have been shot uh, with all practical things. There's nothing has been used. There's no real props. It's all within the actual environment, which is what really made it great. Now, Paul, what about the Dogma sixty nine version of this film that I do know you did watch? You're into that that old demon porn. <sighs> is this really what we're doing? <laughs> this is this is really how we're going to do this. <laughs> I mean, do you want to talk about the actual movie instead? Here's what I want to talk about. Let's get the <laughs> elephant out of the room on this one real quick. Okay. That I've been left out of all the bits. This movie has neither anyone who's rabid in it <laughs> or really any grannies. They mainly refer to the titular grannies in the film as their aunties. Where would you be? Home. In bed. With you. 
That's nice, but how are you going to explain me to your rounds? Not just mainly refer to them as aunties, they entirely so. Yeah, there's no granny mention. They're just old. Well, wait, wait, wait. And in- there are two. There are two children, and the grandma. They would be grandmothers to those children, I think. Maybe not if they're still. But, they'd be maybe but, great, maybe great aunts at best. Okay, like that, and that totally could be. It's not clarified. And your Paul, your point stands. How many cousins were there? Like fifty, and they're all terrible. They're all terrible. <laughs> Speaking of no grannies, literally the grannies on the cover of the trauma version of this aren't the grannies from the film either. I was trying to figure that out. They're different actresses. Yeah, it's a complete nightmare. And and let me say, I, I didn't watch this before picking it, obviously. Um, <laughs> But I watched the trailer, and they cut together a pretty entertaining trailer. Like, when you hear the title, you see the trailer, you're like, this is going to be nuts. And it was just not. It was so (laughs) slow. It was so slow. It took over half an hour for anything to really even start. 35 minutes before any possession happened. Of introduction. This is all introduction to terrible people talking about terrible things. Yeah, they pretty all the family members are going to the auntie's birthday party because they all want to stay in their good graces so that when they die, they get the, this massive fortune. And so the family members are all pretty bad. But that family is like a stillborn calf. Soft and smooth on the surface, but underneath nothing but maggot infested rotting flesh yeah i mean i I thought for a second okay what's gonna happen here is you're gonna have a long setup to introduce all these people because there's a lot of family members there's like a dozen or so family members but then when the action hits it was just gonna be crazy nope it just wasn't (laughs) the whole thing just and we'll go into it in slightly more detail i don't know if i can bring myself to go over this point by point i want to say (laughs) and and on top of it if you watch the the version i watched first even all the good stuff was edited out oh my god okay so let's talk about that there's two different versions right there's one on youtube one on on amazon and okay i don't did you the you guys all watch this two times yeah. No. Uh, I no. did. I watched it twice. Okay. Mike watched it twice, and I actually also did a lot of research on the different versions. So, um, the, it, there's a lot of stuff out there on the internet about the different versions, and it, it's quite the shit show. Please tell then, Paul. Please elaborate. Well, basically, I mean the tr- the version that's on Amazon is the trauma version that that we watched. Um, and as Chris stated, a lot of the more gory elements have been edited out. And I don't necessarily have a problem with that in concept, but the actual edits were just terrible. Oh, it was yeah. so jarring. Well, like, okay, I'm going to spoil this. So the little girl, which in, in one gen, one genuinely surprising moment for me is they killed off the, the little girl. Mm-hmm. But I couldn't tell if they'd actually killed her or if she was just leaning up against one of the grannies. Cause the, Same here. Right. Yeah. Okay, like, Chris. Wait, what? Okay. Now this is my question. I see. I only watched it once. Um, so yeah. my my hat is off to you if you watched it more than once. No. Um, yeah, I could only get through it once. So I watched the YouTube version, and I can't imagine that being edited out. I mean, there there really wasn't yeah, that was much terrible. gore. I just I, I you're saying that the oh the gore was edited <laughs> out for the Amazon version. I can't imagine what that would look like. Because there hardly was any well, in the YouTube. Well, you didn't see a hal- halberd in a guy's balls. That's what you missed out. <laughs> oh yeah. The Wait, best there part was of the balls. Movie. <laughs> well, no balls, but in the no. in the in the producer's cut, the longer gory cut, there's when uh, when one of the guys dies. Uh, uh, Harvey, the arms dealer guy. Uh, yeah, he he gets a, a halberd shoved up his taint. Um, <laughs> Does he? Which you and don't across the see. Room. Yeah, and you don't see that in the Amazon edited yeah, version. Yeah, the, the, the Amazon edited version is you get a really quick shot of them chopping his arm off. And then that's the it. next thing you know, his torso is flying across the, down some stairs. That's, yeah. that's what it. I saw. So the, the yeah. YouTube version I saw must have been matched the Amazon. You didn't even yeah, watch the version. good YouTube one? <laughs> I, no, oh. I, watched the, I thought I watched the YouTube one that because oh. that was supposed to be the good one. I well, guess I got the there... wrong version on YouTube. Oh. Here, here's oh. the problem. Things get... Things get very confusing yeah. because there's actually several different versions out there. There's there's the Belgian or the French version, whatever you want to call it, that has subtitles that does have some of the gore left in there. Um, and then in 2015, they put out a Blu-ray, which has a couple different <laughs> versions on it, including <laughs> a new cut. Blu-ray 
a new director's cut that apparently actually cuts out a lot of the first third of the movie that ca- cuts oh. out all that oh, boring wow. um, oh, you know, yeah. introducing the characters. <laughs> so I would be interested actually in seeing that version sometime. Yeah, yeah I suppose. Really um, you, you know what I wanted this movie to be, honestly? I was thinking about this and as you know, I was watching it, like what changes I would want and what I was looking for. I, as soon as the possession hits, which should have taken not as much time to get to, I wanted this movie to be like crank. Like that pacing, <laughs> like these grannies just go ballistic, like for the rest of the movie. And it's just furious in defense of the film, because I think I actually did like this maybe a little bit more than the rest of you guys in defense of the film. You know, it's older. It it supposedly came out in 88 to me. It looks like it was shot more early or, yeah. or mid 80s mm-hmm. in, yeah. in Belgium or whatever. And a lot of older horror movies have that sort of, you know, the first almost half of the movie is all setting everything up, which is what this movie did. Sure. I mean, it's like uh, Tarantino's uh, Grindhouse movie. You know, the, it takes forever to get to anything. Oh, God. That's <laughs> yeah. Well, that's this, a whole other thing. This, this movie takes forever for anything to get to. And like you mentioned, like the first five or ten minutes of it is them, all the family members driving into a, with in cars into this castle. And you... You you could tell right away. Not only are these people greedy and whatever, and their you know their intent is to just kiss up to the to the aunties so they can get money, but they all hate each other. The families hate each other. Mm-hmm. There's not a single couple that likes each other. Maybe the lesbians, but we don't know who the two lesbians are. We well, just know there's well, at least one of them. Well, no, well I I think I mean the lesbians show that they like each other, but the girlfriend like sleeps with the asshole like sports well, car guy at the drop of a hat. she gets sexually assaulted. She gets pressured into it. It's fucking she horrifying. Get, she did get pressured into it. Now it's my turn. So you're trying to survive, but I think you want a man. You can't admit it. The point I was make, trying to make, though, is you see them driving in, and my notes literally say, they are all awful. I hope every one of them dies. <laughs> yeah. And the movie couldn't even get that right. There were survivors. As all the people were showing up, I just wrote, I get the feeling these people are all fodder. <laughs> yeah, they all feel like that. The moment I knew I, 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 was, I wasn't going to like the movie was near the beginning when they killed Alice, the maid, the only mm-hmm. character you can sympathize with. She's yeah, nice, yeah. she's been abused, and you're like, great. And then they just fucking, number two on the kill list, she's done. And I'm like, well, this movie's not, the, the, the story at least, has got nothing going on for it. Yeah, well, yeah. well let's back it up here a second, because there is, I guess, sort of one thing I, I did like about um, this beginning part. Um, so the idea is all the family members arrive. Everyone's fairly separate in their own rooms. They're all getting ready for dinner. Um, we have seen the grannies. They went into town for a little bit, but they're back. Everyone's just getting ready. So this is where it should have been more like monster mash. (laughs) Yeah. Well, maybe, um, the, the family all gets ready for dinner. It's formal. Um, yes, there's the brother that has sex with the lesbian girl, uh, and pressures like she slaps him and then he presses it and she gives in. Um, and then at dinner, everyone's battling, right? Um, and I believe per- this is not the part I liked, but this is a note <laughs> I had down. Percival is a, a priest and he's back for dinner. <laughs> yes. That's and what you liked he, about it. Interesting. Wasn't he, no, no. Wasn't he going to stab a child with the fork? He was. Yeah. Yeah. They sat the priest in between the two kids, which I yeah. don't know if that's a joke against the priesthood and kids, but whatever. Yeah. yeah. But he, he had his fork out. He was mere moments away from stabbing the kid. All right, you've asked for it. What's happening, Percival? Nothing, Aunt Victoria. I'm just showing the child how to use a fork properly. So the grannies were nice, right? Like, I think they kind of yeah. bossed around the servant a little bit. But yeah, so they're nice. The families are all clearly they gave evil. a homeless guy a bottle of wine. Yeah. So, Once I was so blind, nice. but now I can drink. <laughs> <laughs> I would have liked to see a little more of them being nice as part of the setup. Well, that my my point is, if they're nice, but then they get possessed, are we supposed to be rooting for the grannies? Because they're <laughs> they become demons. I don't think so. So who are we supposed uh, to be rooting for in this movie? Yeah. No one. No well, one. Probably the, <laughs> That's a problem. The black sheep son who like uh, fucking possessed everyone. Mm. Oh I yeah. Will, I will agree that um, there are some characters that uh, you know Percival is a prime example of someone that you're definitely not going to root for. 
But I mean, what was wrong with uh, the lesbian? I, I found her to be perfectly uh, no, somebody that I could root she for. Was she was the fine. only one. The only Helen, one. Yeah. Helen, the wife of the children, or the mother of the children, became okay. Um, yeah, but as, then she yeah. went insane. Yeah. yeah. But okay, so as they're all at dinner, this is the part that I kind of liked. Um, the gate rings and the, the maid has to go check the gate. And Large Marge is waiting. She's at the gate. Yeah, Large Marge is there. <laughs> and she says, open this gate. Open this gate. Open this gate. Open this gate. And she has a gift. I just like that Large Marge was in the movie. It was not Large Marge. <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> Wasn't it? Well, I can't, can we say the whole reason why she wanted the gate open? No, you can't say it. Move on. It was just be. Oh, well, oh, I'm yes. going to say it. She couldn't She couldn't stand talking between bars. <laughs> yes. yeah. Let's open the gates so we yes. can just have a short conversation where I hand you a gift. Which could have fit through and the bars. And then she leaves. Yeah, it could have totally fit through the bars. There was no reason to go through that. It's a little box from the uh, yet another family member who worshipped the devil and was sent away and locked up for like six months and then uh, was kicked out of the will. So he sends a, a an evil box to the to the family. Yeah. They they spent so much time introducing us to a bunch of awful people. They used literally two throwaway sentences to explain what you just said. That's all we got from them. <laughs> Didn't know that it was a guy who worshiped the devil and no one liked him anymore. That's all we know about it. I believe the special gift was from Christopher and yes. he did yeah. go crazy. You're- you're welcome, guys. Could we have not at least seen Christopher? You know, he could have been there and given the box I mean, in person, and then the whole thing backfires on him, and he dies too. I don't, I don't know. I can yeah, think of a million of ways this movie good. could have been better. Yeah, he could have shown up with it and said, here, ha, ha, ha. Yeah. Jay, I'm looking at IMDb right now. <laughs> Large Marge was played by Alice Nunn, and this movie is not in her filmography. <laughs> uh, well, no oh, kidding. She probably sorry. had it scrubbed after this movie came yeah. out. Yeah. Do you, do, you, wait, do you guys think they had to cut a bunch of cool shit out of this because they sang the birthday song twice? Oh, yeah, they had a, <laughs> they had to pay for that. But twice. it's, well, it's it's public domain now, so they could have well, totally... Well, not then. Uh, then it was yeah, hardcore then, shit. It was, yeah, exactly. Unless maybe in Belgium you can, like, they don't care about copyright law. Yeah. I think it's important to point out that I guess the reason the aunties open up this gift from... Christopher was that? Yeah, his name? crazy yes. Christopher. Crazy Christopher is that? There's this there's this notion that he's trying to make amends, and and they see this box and they say, oh well, if this is his gift to us, he must be serious about you know trying to make things right, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so they open this box and then they're like, ooh, yeah, he's being nice. And then yeah, it's, someone it's just shouts a bunch of out, cigarette smoke that Christopher breathed into the box and closed before it could flow out. Yeah, they're, they're, so well, someone trying to—they're trying to distract the other awful children and whatever are are like, "Where's the cake? Where's the cake?" And so they they need to get a cake. Um, oh, wait. But first, the little girl has to go to the bathroom. They make a big point of letting you know that the little girl has to pee or something. Susie, Susie has Susie, to go to the yeah. toilet. Yeah. Yep. But, but they they get this cake, and while they get this cake, uh, they start singing the birthday song, and then they start chanting. Blow Rod, a wish, do blow a knife a wish, for the cake. Blow, not yet, Christopher. That's oh, that's not the first chant. Let me get to my point. There's, they chant blow, blow a wish, blow a wish a bunch of times, really obnoxiously. Like all of these people are being really snide and rude and making gross faces at each other. And then suddenly when they have to chant, they all look like six-year-olds clapping yeah. and pounding. Oh and it's insane. And then the poison, like, smoke gets into the glasses for the aunties, and then they start chanting, Chris? Radu, a knife for the cake. Radu, is that how they said it? <laughs> Radu! Radu, a knife for the cake. Radu, Radu, a knife for the cake. It's so long and fucking belagered, it's, it's so insane. So dumb. Anyway, I like those. And then one of the grannies eats the head off one of the lesbians. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> just like that. That's pretty much it. Well, <laughs> they just grow real long claws, and the arm reaches all the way across the table and pull. And when we're describing this, we're probably describing it, and and your the image that you're getting in your mind is better than how it was shot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
Um, <laughs> well, but but again, Jay, you didn't see the uncensored version, so the, it, it true it did turn out better when you see the uncensored cut. That's true. Than than probably what yeah. you saw. Well, what, what did it look yeah, like? This, I agree. The scene was slightly longer, if I remember right. I did watch all the good bits in the uncensored version. What did it look like, yeah. Paul? Um, I mean, it looked like like when they first uh, attack. It was basically. A more drawn out scene where you, you like you, there's a decapitation and you see a lot more blood and it just it doesn't have that sort of truncated feeling that the the, the trauma version yeah. Has. yeah well that trauma version made me think that they ate the whole body because you don't get to see that that decapitated body after she eats the head yeah, yeah. right yeah it looks like she just the grandma eats the entire body <laughs> <laughs> also i want to say one of the sort of charming things for me if i'm being honest is you know we we've said this this movie was i believe shot in like a couple different countries right belgium and france and the netherlands or something like that yeah sounds about right and i read that the all of the actors the you know the performances are very sort of stilted and it's it comes across as very strange i read that that's because none of the actors actually spoke English yeah. and so they were delivering all of their lines phonetically it, and yeah. so it kind of comes across as this sort of almost I don't want to say alien but you can tell that something's a little off mm. oh yeah the, the acting is on par with the room in this um, <laughs> and but the, there were that explains so Paul because at one point one of the grannies is reading the letter from Christopher uh, crazy Chris and she's reading it and she stumbles over a word and repeats the word will Right. Oh, yeah. I yes, thought that was a, my, that was a dead giveaway. My first thought was they couldn't just do another take. Is that the best they had of that? <laughs> but then that makes sense. If she's reading it phonetically, she's you know yeah okay yeah well cool. I, I can see how it would sort of turn people off for some reason. Personally, I I kind of thought that it was charming see, in a way. I'm, yeah. I'm with you, Paul. Sure. I'm with you. I, I that's one of the things I really did like about this movie. But maybe not because it's charming, but because it reminds me of when I first started getting into horror films and seeing all these like crazy like foreign movies you know italian horror movies and what you know mm. it's just there's this whole atmosphere and the way the lines are delivered and dubbed terribly that reminds right. me of that simpler far more innocent time of my life and so i got a little bit of <laughs> right. a little bit nostalgic <laughs> watching this movie and so i'm assuming that that we heard i mean everything was dubbed so i'm assuming that these were all english actors overdubbing the the belgian actors yeah lines. i think i read that that's, that's what it seemed exactly like. what happened and yeah. I would love to see the ADR sessions of that for the grannies because they were pretty <laughs> over the top. Yeah, yeah. somebody could, in could, a studio doing that. Jay, do you want to explain the grannies like aesthetically before and after? Because I think yeah. there's a whole thing going on. Oh, there's a whole thing. So the grannies, uh, they are you're you know just little old ladies kind of thing, and then after the change, which is pretty abrupt, they kind of split and like grow. They're um, very athletic. Sort of red, <laughs> hot <or> babes. <laughs> they're like <laughs> just demonic. They just the classic sort of demonic look, um, and they're terrible looking. And I'm pretty sure, obviously, different actors played those. But uh, yeah, there's a but pretty in terms stark of the effects, difference. I mean, not 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 bad no. in terms of their look. No. Yeah, yeah, especially yeah, it, for the it, time. It didn't look bad if you didn't know what they originally looked like i think like i i, I it really it bothered me that they were just uh, they it could have been anyone it could have been the two children who turned into demons with how these characters looked but yeah, they, well they had the they like were. dresses the grandma dresses and stuff yeah but but and they did drool a lot which was pretty gross i thought the drooling was pretty effective in terms of yeah, gross. Was yeah. gross um so after the dinner af after the one it's the is it the lesbian that gets chomped down on there's so many people i think i don't know I it's not the lesbian, no, it's somebody else. Okay. Well, there's two um, lesbians, though. Oh, right. Yeah. I think it's yeah. Erica I, I that think, gets I think you're right, Mike. Because um, I remember when... Well, I no, you know what? I don't know. They all die eventually, or most <laughs> of them do. But anyway, so everybody runs from the table, and they all just sort of get stuck in different rooms, and or they lock themselves in different rooms. And this is kind of how they divide up the movie for quite a long time is they just keep cutting to the different groups. The, the rest of the movie. for the yeah. For, yeah, pretty much for the rest of the movie. <laughs> no, it's the whole movie, Jay. Where do they not do that? Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, maybe, just... maybe you're talking about 
how when they all run away, they learn they can't escape. They've all the, the grannies are locking them in the house, but somehow instantly someone gets right outside the house, and that happens, I think, well, two more times. Well, see, well the thing is, yes. the, the first people who get outside the house, they end up in escaping through the cellar that's like flooded to knee length or something. Yeah. That looks like Christians were buried Bob. there two thousand years ago. <laughs> it's just terrible. And they have, we have yeah. them. Yeah, they get out. Get the, yeah. uh, well, you get, like this is not Jaws. The, the hand does yeah. come up from the water, and then like they but it doesn't do anything. They just kind of run away. Mm. And next next yeah. shot, they're outside and in the jeep trying to trying to yeah. escape. They get in a car, and uh, it's the sports car guy, right? Yeah, and, sports yeah, car the guy jerk. and the uh, and, and the jerk and one of the jerk's wives, the fat guy, the fat jerk's wife. Yeah. Uh, and, no, no the, it's the lesbian. It's no, the lesbian, it's, I think. No, no, See, no. See, you can't tell. Is already dead. Yeah. Oh no, All yeah. Characters no, are terrible. It's it's Fat Stash's <coughs> wife. It's Fat Stash's wife. Yeah, Fat Stash's um, wife. Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> the granny gets in the car and snaps the sports car guy's neck and pulls the woman back in the car. And this was a thing I thought that was kind of funny. The granny says <laughs> um, sh- that she'll kill her unless she sings Happy Birthday. And then she says, "What's she say? Anybody remember?" Sing for uh, me, bitch, or something like that. Sing, bitch. I thought that was a pretty good scene. I liked that because the because the woman was dr- crawling out of the car and Granny pulls her back in. Yeah. And then I thought that was pretty good. And this whole yeah. scene right here is really creepy. Yeah. Um. And so once she's done singing, the Granny says, "Okay, you can go." <laughs> and then runs her over. <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah. Well, yeah. okay. She this reanimates because... the body. Yeah, yeah. Well, does she reanimate the body? I thought she like, just like possess. Uh, yeah, no. I don't know. She like, reanimates the body the of the seat. jerk. Yeah. She runs yeah. it into the fence, right? Yeah. Yeah. She runs it into the woman, which is actually a pretty good shot too. Like yeah. they tied her to like the front of this jeep and like really brought her in pretty close. It seemed to that yeah. fence. Yeah. 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 And then that's another shot. Pretty much any death scene in this film, if you see the uncensored version, it's going to be a little bit different than. Yeah. The version, the trauma version that's on yeah. Amazon, because they let they let this uh, death scene play out a lot more. Yeah. We cut over to another group um, with Percival, the priest, and another guy who looks like Alex Jones. Um, yeah, <laughs> and they're talking. Uh, it's John, if you want his actual name, it's John. I prefer Alex Jones. <laughs> I believe he's. I, I agree. Um, they well, realize twenty after about twenty minutes that their daughter should be done in the toilet. Um, so they completely <laughs> forgot about that. That was yeah. unbelievable. Oh God. What happened to Susie? Oh no, she doesn't know what's happening. That is some grade A bad parenting right there. That's the only time this young little girl gets her time alone, and that's her personal time. She likes to spend it there. Just she doesn't get bothered by the world. Her parents aren't yelling at her. There's no worry about homework. She's just sitting there by herself, just relaxing. God. Yep. And it's it's a perfect, and it really perfect pays off. Segue to Susie. Chris, you, you you talked a little bit earlier about uh, Susie. Uh, do you want to talk about what happens here? Yeah, she's just kind of wandering around looking for her parents. Everyone's gone. She has no idea what's going on. And eventually, I think she hears one of the grannies. I know they're aunts, but one of the grannies like singing or calling to her. So she goes into a room, and like Granny was normal at this point, right? Like Granny made yep. herself look yep. normal again. So, you know, they're talking, and... She, you know, Granny says that she can play as long as she gives Granny a kiss first. Blah 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 blah. Mommy and Daddy are just playing hide and seek, and so that's pretty much all you see of her. And I think it cuts back to her mom and deciding yes. to, uh, yeah, deciding Helen. to go out to look for her. Yeah, yeah. Helen and Alex Jones have made up because they yeah. argue a lot, and they're gonna go look for <laughs> Susie. And she does. Okay, Percival is the priest, right? He doesn't want to open the door. He's a real coward. And wait, Helen wait, wait, does no, it. no, no. Alex Jones is scared shitless. Uh, she, he's still, not going Oh, is he anywhere. at this point? Yeah, yeah, right, right. Alex Jones is still scared. And Helen and the lesbian go. And and Gilbert. Yes, correct. Gilbert's the little boy. So Helen yes. threatens Percival with a knife to open the door. And she has the line, Listen well, priest. I'm going out of this room to look for my daughter, who's only eight years old. If you try to stop me, I swear I'll knife those two holy orbs you have so little use for. That was a pretty good line. <laughs> so, a good line. 
she go her and her little boy. I don't know why she would take her little boy, but I guess she does. And she goes looking for <laughs> Susie. And okay, so who is the the blonde? That's that's the that's with the her? lesbian, right? That that's is one of the okay. lesbians, right? Okay. Yeah. See, this is how confusing this is. You know, none of it makes sense. Well, if I'm being honest, I'm I'm surprised that we're breaking it down as much as we are <laughs> yeah. here. Yeah, I think this is an important scene because it really. Okay, so I watched the unedited or the uh, the edited cut first, and this is just says it all about the editing of of that cut. Is is uh, the mom and the lesbian go and the son go look for for the daughter, and then the grannies they're at the staircase, and a leg it just kind of goes by real quick, but you can't tell whose it is or how big it is or whatever. And then the camera cuts to the uh, they go up the stairs, and the camera cuts to the little girl leaning against the granny. So I thought, is she still alive? But the unedited cut clearly shows her she has no legs. She's been she's dead. Wow. But yeah, it's it's actually yeah, pretty it's, horrifying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I did not expect them to kill the little girl, and it's well, and, and that just that whole moment continues. They they hear um, when they run right, the grannies yell yeah. through like this door what they're gonna do to everyone else, and they're I believe they're focusing on Gilbert, the little boy, and. They start like yelling about how they're gonna torture his dad. And I just like thought that was like super dark. They're like yelling at this like yeah, oh, little yeah. eight year old boy about like all these terrible things they're gonna do to his father. Yeah. If, if anything, I think the stuff they do to the kids is pretty horrifying. Yeah. yeah. Well, this is where this is where Helen, the mom, and the lesbian, and and uh, come running back into the room. They can't find Gilbert. Uh, and when they eventually oh, find yeah. him. She, she, he jumps up into mom's arms and they're hugging and they're, she's crying. She's so happy to see them. And then we find out Gilbert's a little chud baby and he like bites her fingers off. Yes. Uh, yeah, that didn't make any yeah, sense. That was so, no, yeah. Like, where did this demon kid come from? Was it one of the grannies shape shifting? I think the granny shape shifted. Yeah, I don't. It made no sense. This is where mom goes insane. Yeah. Yeah. Even though the kid is just in in the next room. Well, actually, that was cool, wasn't it? Because, like, she's holding Gilbert, and then she looks over and sees Gilbert, the real yeah. Gilbert. It was pretty and good. And then I liked that, that was pretty mm-hmm. good. And then she yeah. gets her yeah. finger bit off, and she goes insane. Yeah. Um, um, I, I'd like to make a note for all the listeners out there right now, because I just realized we've been referring to the lesbian as the lesbian the whole time. And, and it's not because we're being flippant about her sexuality. That is just literally what she's called throughout this entire movie. They keep it's, yelling at her, the lesbian or you yeah. lesbian. It's, it's it is true. what she's called. I really don't know what her name is. No. Right. No clue. It, it, but, it's so confusing that, I mean, there's nothing to grab onto yeah. other than to be what fair, they though, call her in the movie. Yeah. To yeah. be fair, though, she's pretty much, she and Gilbert are like the only survivors. Yeah, they're badass. So, yeah. 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 Are we skipping well, to the end? Gilbert's we not. can do that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just. The... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's pretty. It's like you said at the beginning. They're really all just fodder, you know. I mean, it's just. It's basically the setup that we just went over. Yeah, yeah. it's really formulaic. Repeat, repeat um, over and over again. Just everyone tries to escape here and there, and they all get caught by these grannies. Well, well I just want to say something about the butler's death. If we're just going to gloss over things, his was the most pointless because. He's, they find him alive. You think he's dead for the most of the movie when the rest of the help was killed. But no, he's alive. He's They're trying to escape. And one of the grannies throws like a liver or something, some sort of organ on the floor. And the butler slips on it and falls into a, a, a window and just dies. Yeah, him and Alice, him and the maid yeah. shouldn't have died. Yeah. There were a couple other good death scenes. Chris, you mentioned the uh, uh, the guy who... Well, he gets his arms chopped off and then he gets like a <laughs> an axe to the crotch because for some reason, one of the demons dresses up in like night gear. Yeah, let's backtrack real quick for that because Harvey, <laughs> the guns dealer and fat stash go go into like the attic or whatever where where they they're going to get out of like an air vent or some sort of weird shaped window. Oh, God, and right. and so fat stash, who, who's like a fucking drunk coward the whole movie. Like tries to climb through this thing, gets stuck. So he Harvey Harvey gives up and he's gonna leave, but he runs into the grannies. So he runs and hides, and then the grannies come down and find Fat Stash just stuffed in, stuck in this like <laughs> crawl space, and they just tear <laughs> open his pants and eat his ass hard, yes. <laughs> like literally eat his ass. That actually was really good. Hold on a second. In, in, in the cut version, the Amazon version, they take a big bite out of his leg and he's dead. 
But in yeah. the regular version, they're just chowing down on his ass oh. and just biting oh. and just eating and blood <laughs> everywhere, and it's great. They're just <laughs> chewing that ass up. So, so oh. that's when the gun. That's when Harvey, the gun dealer, runs out <laughs> after threatening to fight the grannies. He runs away, but then somehow teleports outside, hits a <laughs> shotgun from his fucking car. Which leads me into another death that I, I really liked. The part with the priest when they when they killed the priest. That oh, was that was too. that was yeah. a great scene. The grannies make a bet. So I guess it's it's. In the kingdom of heaven, it's a little frowned upon for priests to kill themselves. A priest who kills himself. <laughs> so I guess that they're they're ruining their shot to get into heaven. So one of the grannies gives him the gun and say, "Hey, the other granny is going to tear you to shit and make it really, really painful. So why don't you kill yourself now and save yourself the pain?" The other granny's like, "Well, you." You could shoot yourself now, but then you're not going to get into heaven. Be strong just once in your boring life. Just once. And it kind of goes back and forth a little bit, waiting for this priest to make a decision. <laughs> then I just love the, the fact that these demonic grannies had a bet going what what the priest will do. They, they were doing a bit of a good Kevorkian, yeah. bad Kevorkian, if you will. Yeah, it was and great. what does he do? He killed himself. He did. The priest shot himself. I was kind of yeah. a surprise. Yeah. Yeah, eh. and then when then the granny goes, I won, I won, I won. <laughs> yeah. And I noted at this point here, one of the gram grannies does seem to be foaming from the mouth. So if there is an argument to be made that the title fits, maybe it's here. <laughs> She's kind of yeah. maybe rabid. She's foaming. Uh, yeah. So Alex Jones has the demon box, the original demon box, and. Who is he with? He's with one of the girls. Oh, he's with the one of the the uh, the one character we haven't really talked about yet, the Virgin Bertha. She's an old kind of like middle aged spinster type. Oh, real, yeah, real quick. So and she's also terrible. So so Al, wait, Alex Jones is with Bertha, who are not a married couple. Literally, at no point do any of the married couples stick together. This yeah. is how much they all hate each other and how unenjoyable <laughs> they are. They all split their separate ways, no matter what. It's fucking insane. Yeah, sorry, Jack. and they Please decide continue. that they need to destroy box the original demon box in a consecrated place luckily the mansion has a chapel sure. um yeah but old demonic christopher didn't think of that no and they're gonna make a run for it and they find the dead priest percival and that's where the biker woman uh or the spinster kind of loses it and <laughs> i think alex jones slaps her and oh yeah gives then he he steps up Alex Jones is going to be a hero and he gives her the box and tells her to run to the chapel because the grannies are coming. And this is where Alex Jones dies. And it's, it's also a pretty visual death. Anybody want this? Who wants to chat me up about Alex Jones death? <laughs> well, this is the one death that I don't think was actually improved by the edited for the unedited version. No, it was the it's same. The same it, in both, it just looked in both. like a, yeah, this it's looked like a trauma death to me. This looked like a toxic <laughs> Avenger style death. Yeah, where they the, the grannies just basically clothesline him in half, like he just gets folded in half. <laughs> folded, yes. <laughs> so and stupid. and by the way, it's kind of perplexing that uh, maybe it wasn't Troma's decision, but it's weird that Troma released this movie and cut out all the gore. I mean, yeah. Oh, yeah. you guys have seen some of the other movies they've done. Supposedly, they they funded with that nine star or whatever, like with them because Troma doesn't have a name on the credits on the actual credits they just have that production thing so i wonder how much or how late they came into the game well yeah i mean it's definitely a movie that was just distributed by trauma like like some of the other movies um you know like night beast was i thought i thought i read that they actually did help finance this thing mm. yeah the, the the theatrical cut is what got edited so i wonder if they cut it because it got like a certain rating or something so they cut it and that's just what trauma had to distribute was the edited version seems weird yeah I don't know. Uh, anyway, so the uh, spinster and uh, gets to the chapel with the demon box and the blonde woman. Is she, wait, she's the virgin, right? No, the virgin is Bertha. <laughs> okay, I don't care. There's a blonde woman there and Gilbert, the little boy, are in the chapel. And, <laughs> and so is the Mama. Blonde, and yeah. Mama, Helen, she's Insane crazy. That She opens the door. Granny tries to get in. Uh, and then, yeah, oh, in my notes, I have, oh, Helen is alive there, too, because she's just off to the side. <laughs> yeah. um, Granny breaks through, 
Spinster destroys the box with a crucifix. The movie's over. We're done. Awesome. Almost. No, Almost. No, uh, well, I mean, somehow, some way, the <laughs> demon granny is transformed back into yep. regular oh granny. Completely fine, even though she's been, like, shot to shit and everything. So fine. Yeah. And that's proven when the next scene where they cut to outside and both grannies are standing up. Totally And they're okay. like moo-moos and just fine and upset that they're being arrested. Yeah. Yeah. Fade to morning? What? Yeah. This is another thing I actually liked about the movie is that they showed a little bit of the aftermath. Usually in horror movies, you don't see, it's kind of glossed over, but here the cops are there, they're bringing the bodies out, they're actually arresting the grannies. You know, it's like we see we, we see some consequences. Yeah, um, Helen goes to the nut house, and Gilbert, the little boy, gets an offer from the blonde woman to stay yeah. with her, Right. Yep. Yeah. So um, we're almost wrapped up. We have we got a stinger though. It's a <laughs> horror film. Somebody talk to me about the stinger. <laughs> God. Oh, this is a this is a major issue with the editing once again. So is it Bertha, Mike? Yes. Bertha is in a taxi after all of the events have transpired, and she's <clears throat> going somewhere. And and basically, we see the the taxi driver is taking her somewhere, and then. She starts puking up all this green blood. Oh, yeah. And you hear the sound of the taxi driver's arm getting ripped off. And then you see a shot of the, um, the arm on the, on the road. For whatever reason, the sound of the arm being ripped off was cut out. And so it just ends up as this really abrupt cut to just an arm on the ground. And then credits go. It's so weird. <laughs> it's quick. Yeah. It was abrupt as it was, but with the sound, at least helped a little bit. <laughs> it's just real <laughs> yeah. quick shot of an arm on the road. Ugh. Boom, credits. Yeah. So, so, so Bertha got de- de- possessed because when she was beating the box, she huffed in a bunch of the smoke, right? Because she was, she was coughing a lot during that, especially near the end. So that, that just now clicked in my brain. So that's why. I think she inhaled the smoke, yeah. Does that mean that it's a different demon that was in the box? Because Oh, because the two demons are already in the grannies. Yeah. I guess we'll just have to make the sequel. There act there mm. actually there actually is room for a sequel. Should we do a, like a Kickstarter or something? Yeah, let's do it. What would we call it Rabbiter Rabbiter Grannies? Yeah. I will want to make that movie in the with the pacing and style of Crank. <laughs> it will be f- furiously fast sure. you know we oh, could we sure. could uh be a little bit more true to the source material and just call it uh demon possessed aunties <laughs> <laughs> nice uh i like it rating time smoky boxes with me. we're trying to think of <laughs> we're trying to th- what think of what to rate this thing as i i I didn't have anything. We're going to do smoking boxes. That's fine. So is it smoky, smoky boxes or smoking, smoking boxes? Smoking. So let's start with Crazy Chris. What do you give Rabbit Grannies? Oh, God. <laughs> well, okay. There were, okay. This, this movie was really slow. It took way too long to get going. The, none of the characters were likable. It was just, it was not good. It was not as much fun. It, was, it wasn't a fun movie. It was just a, kind of a crappy mid to late 80s horror movie having said that the if you watch the uncut version the uh some of the kills were were pretty good or i really enjoyed that and i did like the atmosphere i thought this movie did the atmosphere pretty well and like i said earlier it reminded me of a simpler time in my life when i was just getting into horror movies and renting all kinds of crazy low budget stuff from the mid to late 80s so it was kind of fun in that in that case um i also liked that i every character was so unlikable that i didn't know who would survive i thought they would all die but yeah so good bad it's really ultimately a pretty middle of the road movie for me so i am going to give it 50 smoking boxes okay that was well thought out mike is your answer as well thought out uh well Chris just made me rethink something um, because I, well, I agree that it took the pacing was just, it was really slow and it was annoying how repetitive everything was. It was very formulaic, but not in a well-structured or interesting way. Um, But, but I was going to complain that I, I I have a hard time getting behind movies where I don't have anyone that I 
want to root for. Um, but I, Chris just mentioned that you know he he didn't know who would die because he because everyone sucked, and that that <laughs> is a good point about that. But I still am upset that uh, some of the people that should have uh, anyway. Um, no, the the murder. Some of the deaths are really good. Don't watch the Amazon version. Find it on YouTube. The un. It's like the producer's cut. They call it. Um, find that. Watch that if you're gonna do this. Uh, I'll I'll give it. It's worth a watch, I guess, if you like this kind of stuff. I'll give it forty nine. Um, <laughs> chewy cheeks. Okay. All right. Paul, over Cause to you because they, they ate his butt. Um, I definitely think what, what happened? Uh, I just said, cause they ate his butt. That's why I gave him chewy oh, cheeks. Oh, right. Yeah. A couple, a couple <laughs> extra points for that, for sure. Um, yeah, you know, I think this, this, this movie was, was not what I was expecting at all. Um, but that doesn't necessarily mean I didn't, I, I actually kind of enjoyed it. Um, I pretty much echo most of the things that Chris and Mike have to say in terms of the pacing, in terms of there was some unlikable characters in there. I liked some of the characters. I liked Fat Stash. I liked Lesbian. Um, <laughs> and you know what? It's And look, it's, it's, it's a Belgian movie. It's, it's something a little bit different. It's got a little bit of a different kind of quirky take on things. I enjoyed that aspect a little bit more. I'm going to go 62 smoking boxes. Ooh. Wow. Okay. All right. Um, for me, Jake. yes, of course, I agree with most of what you guys said. Um, I, I do. Yeah. The pacing was slow. I totally agree, Mike, that they didn't really give you anyone to root for. A couple of the characters did sort of step up, but in my mind, it wasn't enough. And evidently I saw the uh, Amazon version or the cut version. So it, I didn't get the benefit of seeing a lot of the kills. Um, I just thought it was slow. It wasn't what I was looking for. Um, I'm going to go 32. Ooh. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> didn't really care for it. There were just so many missed opportunities, I felt. Missed opportunities everywhere that they could have done with this movie. So, Chris, what's next on B-Movie Mania? Oh, yeah. <laughs> On the next episode of B-Movie Mania. Guys, I really do like to keep up with the news and kind of world events. And oh, fuck. I just, <laughs> you know, North Korea has been in the news a lot lately. Yes! Oh, maybe yes! More yes! Going yes! On. Yes! So, uh, yes! And I'm, I'm a little yes! worried. Yes! I'm a yes! little worried about yes! what sort of secret yes! weapons they yes! might have. Yes! Yes! So yes! we've got to do some, uh, some first-hand research for our next pick. Yes! So the former... Great, great leader of North Korea, Kim Jong Il himself, yes! had the director kidnapped <laughs> to create the first, and as far as I know, yes! only North Korean kaiju movie. Yes! <laughs> so we're gonna watch Polgasari. It's yes! on Netflix. Or I'm sorry, it's not on Netflix. It's on Amazon and Woo-hoo! YouTube. And I've been wanting to see this movie for a long time. Me too. Oh yeah. So, There's gonna be so oh, much to talk about. We'll, oh, I'm pick. so we'll, excited. Yeah, so we'll we'll see exactly what the uh, North Korea can can do. I actually have to oh, figure God. out another pick for the season now for myself. <laughs> <laughs> I was also thinking about it. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck yeah. Oh, uh, cool. Thank you, Chris, for digging us out of this yeah. hole or making yeah. it worse. I've not seen it. Who knows? <laughs> we'll find out next week. Mike, can you give me um, in your best uh, <laughs> demonic grandma voice a a you know rate comment or you know the whole like subscribe to us and buy our t-shirts and everything if you want to hear more of b-movie mania or like what you've heard rate and subscribe on youtunes <laughs> on youtunes what the fuck iTunes. is youtunes <laughs> did i say youtunes Hey, kitties, if you want to buy a t-shirt or read more about the movies we've reviewed, go to bmoviemania.com. I'll give you a cookie. (laughs) Thank you, and good night. (laughs) Goodbye. (laughs) Listen up, maniacs. Do you have a question or a comment? 
Would you like to uh, send some bourbon to Uncle Lloydie? You can contact the gang on Facebook at B Movie Mania. You can also drop them a line at bmoviemania.com. Reach out, touch them. They're touching themselves, and they might just reach back. I'm Lloyd Kaufman saying, see you next time on B Movie Mania. Woohoo! Uh oh, my computer just died. God damn it. I just lost my connection. I'm going to keep recording though. I've got a terrible buzzing sound in my head. Let's see if we can hear it here. That's what's going on in my head right now. So that was pretty terrible.